Uh, we are here at the Brewster Ladies Library. It is November 18th, 19, uh, <laughs> 2014. See, I've been here for a while. Um, and we're meeting with Katie Gibbs. And Katie, tell me something about, very briefly, what, when you came to Brewster, where your parents came from. I don't want a long family history, but okay. give me some context. Okay, my father came from New Bedford. My mother came from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and they married and I had me in 1938. Um, my father was a painter and my mother wrote. Um, so there was an awful lot. Dad, Dad lived in Harwich um, on Bank Street and had an antique shop um, in the early days. Um, so they lived in North Dartmouth on a farm during the war. But then he, Dad was always connected with Provincetown, so um, he, they found a, a house in Brewster, which was the Elijah Cobb house, in 1944, and bought it from a family by the name of Duvenick, who lived in California. Uh, when we bought the house, there was no electricity, there was no water, there was no heat. Um, there were snakes in the house, and there were huge amounts of um, plaster that had fallen down. So my father spent the first year, all winter, putting in a heating system, which was difficult because it was during the war. Um, and finally we moved in, uh, let's see, the, we lived there in 19, 45 we were sort of camping out and they were still working on the house but I moved there as a child and went started school in Brewster in 1946 and I was in the third grade so there were probably eight children in my grade um, at that time the Brewster school had two classes in one room um, was it every grade double mm -hmm. okay um, so that was sort of fun because if you get rid of, you get finished with your um, work, you could sit there and listen to the grade above you. So when you got to the grade above you, you knew some of it. You know, so anyway, um, um, let's see. We had a wonderful teacher by the name of Miss Hollingsworth, and I think it probably was her first year of teaching. Um, she was a wonder. We had we had things like uh, aquariums, and you know, she's sort of. She was she was a good teacher, but she was very dedicated. I think all of the teachers were dedicated at that time. You said there were only eight people in the third grade. Yes, but your whole classroom would have had probably sixteen, maybe twice that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tell me a little bit about this house because I'm fascinated. I understand the snakes. Mm -hmm. I understand the no electricity, no water. No water. Was there a pump in the kitchen? I don't remember. No. Was there a well? There was a well. But we, there was an artesian well, but we redid it. We, okay. I remember a man coming in with his um, piece of stick. With a dowser? Yeah. And um, they found an artesian well. Oh my goodness! Right next to the house, so that was wonderful. Um, so then they put in real water from the well. Then yeah. Had, okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, what else do you want to know? Well, <laughs> it sounds like the house was in really rough condition it was. in it many been, ways. It had been vacant. I'm not sure how long. Yeah. Um, and I have somewhere which I will find. Um, all of the um, writings back and forth from my mother and dad to the Dubiniks uh -huh. um, on, on about buying the house, and which would, should be fun, you know, to have. Yeah. Uh, we bought the house in 23 acres for $10,000. Um, but then, of course, we put another 10 or 15 into it. Oh, I'm sure. But. Um, it was, it's not as it is today, um, there was an L, or actually, it's supposed to be a house that was moved on to. The, the L that was just recently taken off. 
or fairly recent. That was okay. this was it went down the side of the house, and then there was a carriage shed that oh uh, attached to it. Yeah, and that the carriage shed was where my father had his studio. Um, so was the house comfortable by the time you moved into it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we were still. I don't think we ever stopped, <laughs> you know, <laughs> doing things. But oh yeah, it was great. It was a wonderful house to grow up in. Now, and there was a, a studio, perhaps, that was through the woods near the beach. No, no, there wasn't a little house. Out there was a house right on the beach. Okay, um, that had been a duck blind on the pond, and we. Um, uh, floated it across the pond, dragged it up the hill, and put it on our bluff. And um, it was great because we'd go down, you know, for for um, picnics, um, just the whole family, like Fourth of July, and the kids would, you know, play on the beach, and we'd have uh, sun and um, and peas. Of and, course. Um, um, we did that fairly often. We'd go to the beach and have, have dinner. Uh, there was a bed there that we, every once in a while, we'd sort of camp out. Unfortunately, over the years, the Little Red Shack became infamous uh, because everybody else used it too, <laughs> which it was sort of a love nest shall we say, um, and even I... Are you talking about kids, or are you talking about anyone in the community? Um, mostly teenagers, college yeah. kids. Um, it sounds but like I've, had, I've met so many people, and my daughter has met so many people who say, oh, I dated my husband in that little red shack. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sort of funny. Well, I was going to ask you if this was a party place just for the family, or if you and your friends used it. No, I never. I, uh, I may have used it once, um, but um, no, this was in later years. Yeah. Oh, um, I see. After my father died, in probably in the sixties, seventies. Okay. Probably, yeah, probably seventies, eighties. That's excuse me. So it was just a, a lonesome, convenient little beautiful. house. Beautiful. It was beautiful because the it was. Facing towards, sort of towards Provincetown, and you got wonderful sunlight, sunsets mm. there. And my father did a lot of paintings with sunsets and uh, the beach. So um, uh, you, I have them um, in a lot of them in my house, and it's very pleasant too. So did he sometimes use this as a temporary yeah, studio? Go down yeah, and nice. draw or something, but he never right. painted. When you were growing up, was the Elijah Cobb house the icon that it became later? Did you realize you were? Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh, people yeah. knew that it was a well-known house. Sure. Yeah. And um, we, um, Dad, clothed that when we bought the house, there was, you could get into the um, widow's walk, which he because of the the uh, roof needed redoing, he closed it because. He thought maybe I'd get up there, and you know what the kids would get. Sure. Up there. Um, so I would imagine I I haven't been up in the attic since I moved back, uh, but I would imagine there's they should be a place where they covered it over that you could just open it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, when I when my mother died and I moved back into the house. For some reason, the Board of Trade put the house on on a map oh. of in, you know old houses, and I continually had people come just coming in and say, "Are you still open?" <laughs> and I'd be cooking dinner, <laughs> but that sort of went away. Yeah. But always, always people would take pictures of the front of the house. Um, it was, you know because it was an yes. important house. Right. Well, let's go back to school. Okay. Um, how many grades were in there? You're talking two about... Grades, two grades in the classroom. Okay. And how high up did the grades go? Eight grades. Grade. And we graduated. And my class was the first class that graduated. Now, when I speak about the... 
elementary school, I mean what is now used as a town the, hall. The town hall, right. And our class was the first class that graduated from that building. They had added mm -hmm. on a, an auditorium. Um, all the other classes had been graduating from the town hall, the oh, old town hall. Sure. Uh, there was upstairs, um, there was a stage, and that's where they put on plays. Um, that summer group, and I believe it was the Argos. It was very there. early. Um, well, tell, were, tell me, tell me about the audit. Um, my recollection is the auditorium when that was a school was built in the basement. Was down below. Yeah, it was. So they added the basement. I don't remember. There was there. When you walk in the back. You walk up the stairs. You go down, and that was the new auditorium. Right. To the right was the cafeteria, yeah. and I believe they must have added that one. Okay. Um, because I don't remember ever going to what it was Because the building is built on a hill, but they yeah. slope down and back, so mm -hmm. they just... Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, so this auditorium, was it used for um, plays, performances? Was it I really, I don't know. We were the first to graduate, and then That's I went right. out to high school, you see, sure. so you didn't really... I think it was there. probably used for meetings. Yeah. Um, at the the uh, town always had their you know meeting per town town meeting right and that that was always in the old sure. town hall um, and it was wonderful because it was on a Saturday and um, Mr. C um, Crowley um, made chowder and everybody ate lunch there and oh it's just it was just wonderful <laughs> everybody had a good time then of course they changed it to an evening what did they do with children was there a place for children to stay while parents were at town meeting no but yeah. you just stayed home you did okay uh, you know uh, i don't know if older children take care of the younger of course. children or the wife didn't go yeah or right whoever but um, when you were in school, in the elementary school mm -hmm. here, were all the classes about that size? Yes. There weren't large classes and small classes, and that it was well. You'd have some classes that were larger. Yeah. Um, but uh, I remember it being two grades to one classroom, and that one teacher taught two grades. Oh. Tell me the names of some of the other teachers. Mrs. Daly. Dot Daly. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Mrs. Hoover, who was actually Polly Newcomb. Okay. On the other side in West Brewster. Um, she was married to an officer in the Army, I think, and so she was here teaching until he came back. He was, I don't know where he was. Um, uh, Mrs. Dunn, who was from Dennis, her husband was a um, principal, and she was Bessie Dryerhead. She was wonderful. Oh, that's good. And everybody that was in that class would, would if I mentioned this to them, they'd answer me like two L's, two words, two L's, two words. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. And there were two or three other ones that I have never forgotten ever. Um, Let's see, Mrs. Callahan was, was a teacher. Yeah. And um, these, these women must have been young teachers very young. at the time because they were there a long yeah. time. Yeah, and Mrs. Laporte. Yeah. Um, she was there. She was a good teacher, too. In fact, I saw Mrs. Callahan and Mrs. Laporte, although she's been married. Yeah. And I don't remember her her married name, but I saw them oh, probably three or four years ago having lunch. It was so fun. We're, we're hoping to talk to, to them. Or oh, at least really? To, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Ozzy Burris, of course, was the principal. Who, he was there a long time, yes, wasn't he? for a long, long time. Yeah. And he was there, I would have had him for five years, third to the eighth. Yeah. I don't remember when he graduated, when he left. By the time you're in eighth grade, you're doing more complicated work. Did every teacher teach every subject, or did no, teachers no, have they, specialties? No, at the eighth grade, they finally, for instance, had a history teacher, Ozzy Burst taught us history, I think. Um, there was another young man, who I don't remember his name, but he took care of the uh, 
playing, you know, sports, but he also taught us something. And then Mrs. John was the rest of the teaching. Was there a cafeteria? Did you go home? Yeah. Did you bring your no. lunch? We had a wonderful cafeteria right downstairs. Um, and there were ladies from the town, and I can see them, but I cannot remember their <laughs> names, but they would cook for us, and it was wonderful, wonderful food, you know. It's probably 10 cents or 15 cents, mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to uh, do that. So it was real hot meals, it wasn't oh, yeah. sandwiches? Or oh, no, 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 no. No, we had, um, um, let's see. I can't think of the name of it, and I still like it. <laughs> Scotch hamburger on mashed potatoes and beans. Very good. Sounds very healthy. We had, you know, meat and potatoes and a vegetable every and a dessert every wow. day and milk. So then when you went home at night, did you have another dinner? Oh, sure. All we right. ate at 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, what did you What did you play for games? Were there recess times? Recess times, yes. We played baseball, jacks. We were very into jacks. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. The boys played base. We all played baseball, but not together. Mm -hmm. um, swings. They had swings. We would play that. We play with dolls. We play, you know, all this, and then. Um, I was I was trying to uh, get this in, so I'm not, I'm going to be changing the subject a little bit. Right. I was thinking about the activities that we did in Brewster when we were home during sure. um, in the summer. Uh, we just looked forward to the summer so much because all the summer people were coming, and um, I had a best friend who lived right up next to the Brewster store, so she and I would. We all bicycled all the all the time, all over town. And I can remember I would be playing at this girl's house and it was right across from the telephone office. So if Mrs if mother called Mrs. Tinkum, she'd yell out the door, Katie, it's time to go home for dinner. <laughs> but everybody it's it was it was wonderful to grow up in Brewster because everybody knew you. Mm -hmm. And you really, you know, you, nobody really could get lost. Uh, if anything happened in the town, uh, like a fire, uh, everyone pitched in with clothing and food and place mm -hmm. to live. It was, it was a nice, nice town at that time. Um, what was the name of your best friend? You know, I can't remember. <laughs> so um, her, her, her last first name was Phyllis, but I think she's gone. I don't think we've seen, you know, I haven't seen her in years. Um, the church, the Baptist church, was very, very busy with the um, younger people. There was a minister by the name of Mr. Bentley, uh, who was wonderful. He had a uh, youth group. Um, Almost all the children in this area went with it, whatever they were, and um, they we had dinner. They had dinners that they made money for, and we, as the older children, I must have been maybe thirteen, and we would all serve the dinners. When I can remember, I believe the lady's name was Miss Abbott, and she had a black rolled hat. And we came out of, I came out of the kitchen. We were, it was like chicken and something and peas. And I rolled a pea, somehow my plate just slanted and the pea went into Miss Abbott's hat. <laughs> but I didn't dare say anything, so I guess Miss Abbott eventually found the hat, they found the pea. I mean, oh my God, it was awful. And um, uh, we had dances in the town hall. Uh, downstairs. Were these year round or just summer? No, year round. Year round. Like once a week or something? No, it wasn't that often, but we do square dancing. Um, upstairs, the uh, some of the classes before mine graduated from there. Um, let's see, we went to the movies in Orleans. A, a parent would take us. Well, 
they pick up people along the way so that the car, the <laughs> tires are sort of like this. And, but we all went for 10 cents. Um, we were in the chorus at the Baptist Church and we went roller skating in the seventh and eighth grade in Hyannis. Oh, there was and, a roller rink. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, everybody went in one car. That was through the church? I'm sorry? That was through the church? No. No, no, no that was... Just parents. Yeah. So, um... Young people today say that there's nothing to do in Brewster. Well, there really wasn't much to do when I, when I grew up, but, um... We made things to do because we didn't have television. Mm. Uh, the library was very in, important to me because I was near it and I came up and uh, Mrs. Elvis was the yes. um, librarian. And this was the children's room. Um, I have a feeling that they may have moved a wall in the front, in, the, in that next room. They didn't move a wall, they just opened it up because it seems so small. I can't I imagine know. that the she was there with a desk and all the books, are, I, I don't know. But anyway, of course I was younger. It uh, all looks larger. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, there are a lot of foster children in the, in the town. A lady by the name of Miss Parker, who lived up the street next to the old town hall, um, had probably four or five kids. And then Fred and Ginny Hooper, who lived across the street, had two children. Now, is so, that the Mrs. Hooper who was the school teacher? No. Different no. Mrs. Hooper. Fred okay. Hooper was on the fire department for years and years and years. And um, he was the deputy chief. Okay. And he also worked in the Nickerson... Um, Nickerson Park. Park. So... Uh, they did foster children mm -hmm. from Boston? Yes, yes. Now, was this for the summer or to come no, and live year for years? We, they went to school with us. Okay. And it was great because it made a lot more kids <laughs> right in the middle of town. So we after school, we'd go up. And um, I don't know how the Hoopers stood it, but we'd either play in the house or we'd play bas baseball. And then the Jorgensons lived right next door. So... Um, John could play with us, not as much. I think he worked in the store for his dad, but he did. He did play with us. So there were quite a, a few kids who, from different grades, different ages, but we all played together. Tell me again where this Hooper house was, which house it was. It's, it's the house directly behind Ken's store. Ken's market. So where did, where did the Jorgensons live? They lived in the White House. On the corner. Now you said John Jorgensen. I remember Ken Jorgensen. Ken, Ken Jorgensen was John Jorgensen's father. Okay, so it was just called Ken's after him. Okay. Yeah. And then it was, okay. So John is about your age. He's about my age. He, he passed away with cancer. Right. But. And then I, they had a son, and he had died recently. He had two, three sons, yeah. and two of them died recently. Yeah. yeah. So um, obviously, cancer was in the family. Yeah. Well, now, now I'm curious. Where where did you go grocery shopping? We'd go to Ken's Market, but usually, like once every two weeks. And you didn't just get a few little things; you got the whole car full. We'd go to Orleans. Yep. They had an A and P in Orleans, um, and you know they had Ellis's. Yeah, we. I don't remember we ever shopped at Ellis's. I did mm -hmm. in later years. Right. Um, so you go to the A and P to fill up the car, and you go to Ken's to do fill-ins. Yeah, and then my father also, having come from. Having been in Harwich for so much, so long, he went to Toby's. He knew all the. He, they had grown up right. together, so th that's where he got his meat. Did your life change when you got to high school? Yeah, I mean, uh, you didn't. See, you saw the, the other children from town at school. You didn't. You went to school and you came home. There were. 
things at school, but it was a little difficult to get there. Um, so I never was in sports. Um, they did a couple of uh, uh, talent, I, I don't mean that, um, shows where they showed off clothes and I was in that. Um, they had dances. They had, you know, what a usual, uh, yeah. you know. So you went to the Orleans High School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did people, did kids at that time have a choice of going to no. DY? It was only Orleans. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I went away to school, my oh, junior right. and senior year. I see, I see. So. And did the Orleans High School draw from several towns at yes. that time? Yes, Rooster, um, Orleans, and East Ham. Okay. Um, none of the, there were no voc, you know, technical schools. Right. Uh, although they did have a technical department in, in the uh, high school. Um, I know you went away to school for those last two years, but um, did most people, did most kids finish high school? Yes. Okay, even if they weren't going to go oh, on. Oh, there were some kids that dropped out. Sure. But um, a lot of them would drop out and go into the service. Um, pregnancy was not that frequent. Um, I'm, there was one child, girl, that got pregnant, uh, and she had to drop out of school. Yeah. So that was it was very much frowned upon, which is too bad, um, because they should have been able to, you know, do something for their parent. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's. Um, I'm sure you have more things to say. Do you want to bring up something right now before I no. try to move on a little bit? No. No, I'll go with you. <laughs> You know what I want to know? Was the weather different then? Oh, it seemed to be. It was, you know, the one thing I remember living here, I couldn't get on the bus in front, so I, in front of my house, I had to walk up to Main Street. And um, I either got it at Donald Owens or I got it right here at the Mance. But on foggy days, it was so quiet, and you could hear the foghorns from Chatham. It was just wonderful. Of course, you never hear that anymore. It just, just like that, you know, and just, just dead silence. And I can remember, oh, it sounded so lonely, but it was really beautiful, you know. And um, but basically, I guess the, the it was, it was probably the same as it is here. We had some big snowstorms uh, and you'd be in the house for two or three days but you know that wasn't yeah too bad so no school which is great mm -hmm. <laughs> so who was the who was the pol Mr. McLashen was the <coughs> policeman yes. and he was the only policeman right. and I remember him as being very nice um, and he'd drive up and down and around and around um, then Saban Lord took over, and he was, I was frightened of him, oh. um, and he was, he looked very, you know, stiff, like a real policeman, and, um, I mean, I was friendly with the son, mm -hmm. Saban, but, um, uh, I really never had too much to do with Mr. Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the fire department? The fire department was all volunteer. Um, I really, honestly, I don't remember who was yeah. on the fire department at that time. Yeah. Um, I know what I wanted to ask you. Can you tell me the names of your school class? Mates? Yep. Louisa Chase, me, Lorraine Robbins, um, Dickie, I know the guy as little as I know. That's all right. I, <laughs> I pretty much, if you gave me enough time, if you gave me a half an hour. All oh, right, I mean, if it comes back to you. <laughs> um, I did want to talk a little bit about your parents and their friends because I think it's an interesting time in Brewster mm -hmm. and an interesting group of people. So um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your father's artistic history. All right. Uh, my father 
uh, was born in New Bedford. He um, ran away when he was 18 and went to Bermuda. He'd saved enough money to go to Bermuda. And he paint was stayed there probably six or eight months and painted there. Uh, he came back and my great-grandmother sent him to uh, France. And he stayed over there for two years and uh, met a lot of people that eventually ended up here in Brewster. He came home, then he went back for another couple of years, and then he came back and had lived in Harwich and was very involved with the Provincetown Art Association. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he and Tom Bouchard were friends. Was it Tom who brought him to Brewster? No, no. My father brought Tom to oh, Brewster. Oh, I see. He called Tom and said, "I found a barn for you." Um, and Tom came up, and of course they bought them. And it was quite a bit of land because mm -hmm. I know it's gone to uh, the Natural History Museum, it, yeah, I think. Something. Or, um, um, so, so I know I've seen your your father's paintings in the Cape Museum. Mm -hmm. um, is is he collected in other places? Do you he, know? He yeah, he was at the De Cordoba Museum in the permanent collection. He's in um, in uh, Andover, Massachusetts. He was at the, um, um, oh God, the, uh, the I, I museum in Boston, what, Boston Fine Art. Arts. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I don't know if they still have his yeah. work. And of course, um, he had a one-man show in Baltimore. Uh, he was shown yeah. uh, all around the country, but when Art goes up and down, yes. and right now, or before he died, he was, uh, he was not showing very much. As things look to me, and I am not in any way an art expert, they look very much of the time. They look, they have the, the colors and the style of, uh, which may not be the style of today, and maybe again in years, who knows. Uh, yeah, um, it, was, it was abstract. Yeah. And, um, it was not, for instance, you had Hoffman in Provincetown, and that was not abstract. And then groups of, of artists came in, and they sort of took over the Provincetown Art Association, but so it goes. Yeah. There's a very nice collage at the museum here. On the so. door, on a piece of wood. Yeah. I love that. But it, the problem, it bothers me so much, because it's half gone. Oh, it's just we had it over the fireplace at the house, and there were there were pieces of um, china that Dad put on, and um, there were a couple of we're not mentioning Betty Lane by the yeah, um, and um, there were scissors and things he had found on the beach, and um, he put you know he put paint and. Then he put the door together, or it wasn't together, but then he added all the stuff, and I gave it to the museum because I thought, well, I'm moving here, there, and everywhere, and it's going to get destroyed. Well, it's, it's, unfortunately, it, it, there is nothing really left. I keep thinking I should go oh. and fix it, but I don't think I can. I don't know if they let me do that. Well, the little bit I saw, I liked. <laughs> it was. It was great, yeah. Um, Who else was in this? Uh, it was a group of artists, but it was also a social group, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, John, John and Christy Hay, Betty Lane, um, and her husband. Um, he worked at BU in film. Um, George Fedorov, Tom Bouchard. The Slacks. The Slacks. Well, the Slacks, no. The Slacks. Not with my family, because he was very, very, he was a portrait painter, and Dad just couldn't quite take that. So, I mean, they were just different people. Mm -hmm. He t tended to travel more with the Chatham crowd. Ah, okay. Um, let's see, who else? A guy by the name of Whitey Lutz, and he was married to a Richardson. 
from Boston. Was Conrad Aiken part of this group, or was he no. unto himself? He was pretty unto himself, but the reason John Hay came to Brewster was because of Conrad. Mm -hmm. And then we had Theodore Enslin, who just passed away in Maine. He was a poet. Um, and his two children still live on the Cape. I'm trying to think. I'm sure I've left somebody out. Um, Did you get the sense, now I know these questions are somewhat unfair because you were the child and they were mm -hmm. the adults, but did you get the idea that there was, uh, what, an artistic mix of ideas at this, or was it just a group of people who had similar interests and were socially friends? Well, they, would, they were, they were, they were tended to be great uh, conversations about painting and, you know, who was, you know, uh, writing, because my mother wrote. That's right. Um, people, the, the, a lot of people would come in as they were coming into New York or into P-Town. Now, I have uh, had that impression that there were a lot of, out people of going visitors back. who yes. would bring new yes. things to yeah. Oh, um, and Eugene Fitch and Alice, mm -hmm. we didn't mention Yes, that. I'm sorry. Um, um, people just, we, they had cocktails together, they'd have dinner together, they would, um, you know, they, but there were times when there were arguments about who, and it doesn't necessarily mean they, mm -hmm. but someone in New York, what the show looked like, you know, somebody's going to pan it, because, you know, that's the way people are, they don't. <laughs> So quite often, you see, I was an only child, so I sat and listened. And um, I had a great education in that sense. Um, I wrote, read a lot, and I, mother and dad sort of took me around to places that perhaps I, children don't go to, uh, to people's houses, to the theater in Boston. They, uh, we would go listen to jazz at night in, in bars, and I was probably over 12. Mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't do that very much, but Dad loved jazz. And um, so that's what we did. <laughs> we did! <laughs> so then you went away, and you came back to Brewster. Yes. Oh, I came back almost every weekend. Oh, okay. It wasn't as if I was away, we were away. Uh, but it was good for me because I became more self-sufficient. Because really, being my parents were very, very strong-minded, and I just uh, I was very quiet. Mm. And um, um, but I became came into my own, I guess, when I went away to school. I, I was going to ask you how you felt about the difference between Brewster as you first knew it and Brewster today, um, but I don't want to completely ignore the plays either. So maybe we should talk about that a little bit. Um, the plays. The only one that I ever was involved in was Alice. Okay. Uh, Mother wrote the script. Um, she was the queen. Um, um, a, a young man who was a Saul uh, lived with Tom and Diane during the summer, and uh, he was the caterpillar. <laughs> a lot of there were a lot of young college people from Dennis who were involved, and I really don't remember that. Um, but it was we practiced all summer, all summer, every day, and finally I think we only had four plays, four nights, we did it, and that was it. <laughs> but, but it was to raise money for yep. the library. And, and how, how big an audience did you have? I... Uh, okay, look, it was... Yeah, it was very dark, you know. <laughs> it was done at the Bouchard's house? Yes. Are you acting out in the garden? Both, at the top, and then you'd walk down so into the, the garden. Where's the audience? The audience is to the side. Oh, the side of the garden. The side of the house. The side of the house. Okay. Before you go down. Okay. Um, so I would say probably 35 or 40 people. Each night, probably. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, it wasn't bad. 
And so. you, you made all the costumes. Yes. But I wasn't involved. No, no. I think probably Diane Bouchard was. But she did a lot of the directing. Yeah. So um, I really don't know who did it. Alice Fitch probably helped. Yeah. Um, now there were, there was one play a summer, and there were maybe five plays. Mm -hmm. uh, the Shakespeare, um, Hamlet. They did King Lear. They did Midsummer Night. Okay. I think. Okay. I've forgotten the others. Um, but I was about twelve. Yeah. When I did Alice, and I had long blonde hair. Yeah. Um, and I, I honestly was not involved with yeah. the other ones. That's I was, right. you know, getting up there. That's right. Being, a, you know, beginning to see other people, etc. Um, we do have a little more time here, so let me try this. What changes have you seen in Brewster then and now? I mean, some obvious ones, but just impressions you have of the town. Well, of course, it's much bigger. Um, nobody knows anybody anymore. Yeah. Um, I would think that there probably is a schism between the old Brewsterites and then coming in. I know I heard from someone who, um, well, never mind, I'm not going to say that. Well, don't tell me who it is, but I would <laughs> like to know I the sentiment. To say it. Well, it's just that, well, Nini told me uh -huh. um, that everybody knows everything about history, but none of it's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> because you come up, they'll come up and say, so-and-so lived in that house and blah, 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 and so-and-so never lived in that house yeah. at all. Um, but, and she would get quite perturbed. And I, I can understand sure. why, you know. Um, I don't come to Brewster that much. You live um, in Dennis now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the town I grew up in, but of course it's changed and I really don't, no one knows me anymore. Um, for instance, I've never met you. <laughs> and you probably never heard of me. <laughs> so, so um, I play sort of low key person. Yeah. Do you know many people, you said that you get together with school friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there are people still around. There are people yeah. you knew. These are mostly Orleans. Oh, they live in Orleans yeah. now? Um, I don't think, I don't, can't think of anybody who is in Bursa from my class. I think they were these high school friends then or were they? They were high school friends. Okay, so they yeah. never did live in Brewster. No. Okay. So, um, but Brewster's a lovely town that you've done very, very well with the zoning. Um, and it looks pretty much the same as when I grew up. So that's really nice, except I miss the, the comradey. Yeah. Um, when you grew up, there were not so many trees. Uh, Is that true? I suppose so. But, but you don't have a sense of that? No. Okay. Um, I remember oh, Miss Gervais at yeah. the town, at the, where you got gas. Um, she was wonderful. And she, every time you got gas, put her foot right on the get dashboard and leaned on the car and talked. <laughs> she was great. But Dad would say, oh, Lord God. <laughs> <laughs> so. It was uh, a Texaco station? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. her. Um, but she was marvelous. She had quite the stories to tell. And uh, Oh, we should have talked to her. No, oh, she would have been wonderful. <laughs> so, You know, nobody has talked to us about Donald Doan. Really? Yeah, I mean, he's been, the story's been mentioned in some of these interviews. What was he like? Well, of course, I knew him as a kid. He ran the store. He obviously was interested in old things. Mm -hmm. um, he was 
he had a sense of humor, but it was sort of a dry sense of humor. Um, and he was running the store when yeah. I was growing up. So, you know, I never got to know him on a, yeah. on a personal basis. Um, that'd be too bad if you couldn't, if you must be able to find somebody. Yeah, there was somebody. Um, I don't know if Howard Eldridge is still around. Um, they lived on 124. Um, he worked there, and so. Oh, really? But I'm not sure if he's still alive. Good person to know. Okay. Good. Okay. This has been such fun. Well, I, I knew it. it was going to be fun, but this has been. Well, wonderful. I hope I answered all the questions that you want to know. I'm sure there are many more that we didn't come up with, but thank you so oh, much. You're welcome.